G'day YouTubers, this is it, launch day. And the day began like any other. I arose early-ish. I planned to take my time, make a cup of tea, shoot some footage for the video. However, my plans were dashed by the arrival of Gary from Yelvertoft. No sooner had I stepped outside the boat than he'd arrived with his tractor and incredible and powerful boat lifting trailer. Before I knew what was happening, he was moving the huge machine into position its powerful hydraulic rams bending, twisting and lifting the trailer to fit in the narrow gap under my boat. After what seemed like minutes, my boat had been lifted into the air and was then manoeuvred towards the slipway. If you ever wondered what a boat would look like with wheels, Then with the assistance of Neil from Yelbertoft, the boat was lowered into the water. And eventually she was floating all by herself. And somewhat incredibly, and somewhat surreally, I am on the water. Stern tube, stern gland is absolutely fine. No leaks at the moment. I can always uh, tighten her up a little bit if needed. As you can see, she sits a little bit low in the water, um, which is going to be sorted out by shifting ballast around. Yes, it's a very, very strange moment as it represents a culmination of thought and energy, blood, sweat and tears. I have arrived. I have a motto, never take your boat on a maiden voyage without first having a cup of tea. Grand. So that's enough of that. Let's get this show on the road. Without further ado, let's fire up this engine. Remove the mysterious baked bean tin. So to fire up this old girl, first things first, make sure she's in neutral. Engine stop is pushed in. Starter battery isolator turned on. Starter battery master turned on. Decompressor turned clockwise until the pointer is pointing up. Starter circuits on. we're underway, the nerves are easing, a little bit. I'm now off to Yelvertoff Marina, into the main part, to fill up with some water. It's a bit windy, which is playing havoc with everything, but uh, there you go. 
I'm easy. I'm moving. a whole lot better than I imagined. Took on water. Not sure how much water I'd put in there, um, but I just couldn't wait any longer. I've probably got about half a tank, maybe three quarters of a tank of water, which is more than enough. My first moored boat. Dead slow. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. It's everything I thought it was going to be, and more. Whilst I'm passing some moored up boats, what do I think of it so far? Amazing. Very, very nice indeed. This is the life for me. <laughs> so I've been at it about three quarters of an hour. I think I might find a nice little spot, moor up, have a cup of tea, and just give everything a quick check over, make sure everything's all right, and then I'll be on my merry way. This spot here might just do very nicely. my word that's it there are no words the, you know the usual amazing stunning incredible they just they're all just words at the moment I mean, every single thing I've thought about all my energies everything has been focused on this one point this and it is beautiful. It's going to take some time to just take it all in. So in the meantime I'm enjoying a lovely cup of tea. I'm on a straight, dead quiet, 
stretch of canal, there's not a soul around. This is amazing. See, look, these are his words again. It's incredible. <laughs> it was very nerve wracking this morning and seeing the boat go into the water because you build up these main all important points you worry are going to happen like you know, is the repack stern gland is that going to be leaking I knew the boat has a, an issue with sitting too low in the water which has got to be sorted out by reballasting and she's sitting lowish but not really that bad a couple of inches higher she'll be fine just waiting for the engine to cool down and before I get going I'll check the oil again make sure everything's okay with that but first I'm gonna enjoy this moment the klaxon that I have on the front of the boat I bought that um, before I bought the boat basically little did I know that there was this original I'm assuming about 1940s maybe like wartime something like that beautiful Yep, this is highly recommended. I think everybody should try this at least once in their life. Even if you just hire a boat for a weekend or a week, there's plenty of hire holidays. I'm assuming I'm doing about four mile an hour. Yeah, the canals are so unbelievably quiet. I mean, here we are, getting towards the middle of June, and there isn't a soul about. Still, more for me. Small world, eh? There's someone who knew the people who had the boat before me. If you're watching, good day. Over there is what I think must be the M1. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. I think it suddenly struck me. I'm on the water. On a boat. A boat that I own. And I can go anywhere. On the, on the water, of course. I could liken these canals to something like a rich vein of life-giving sustenance or something like that. Well, this is a particularly picturesque spot. The woodland. Birds twitting in the trees. As they say, the canals are a completely different world.
incredibly peaceful. Even the sound of the engine can't detract from the silence. It's probably been said a hundred thousand times, but stood here, there is something hypnotic and quite distracting about the whole thing. It's just the sound of the engine, the water just slopping away behind the boat. And it's so smooth, no potholes. Well, it's now about half past five. I've been uh, going for quite a few hours, actually. A good uh, three hours at least. And I think this might be a very good spot for the night. Well, that's the end of my first day on the canals. I'm moored up just outside a village called North Kilworth, a village that was famously mentioned in the Doomsday Book as having the only petrol station that sells Well, good morning. It's the next day of my short little excursion uh, north up the Leicester branch of the Grand Union Canal. And I certainly had a very nice sleep. It took me quite a while to finally get to sleep. My mind was just buzzing continuously with everything that had happened excitement of the first day on the water. Now it's always a good idea uh, when you're setting off up a canal to consult the very handy Nicholson guide for the particular canal you're on. Now unfortunately I didn't do that and I've now discovered that I'm about a quarter of a mile away from a huge long tunnel called Husband's Bosworth. So I am currently here, well I'm actually about here. There's North Kilworth, I'm about here. And Husband's Bosworth tunnel is, I'm like there, it's here. So it's not even a quarter of a mile, it's around that corner there. Now I have no idea what this tunnel's like, whether it's wide, narrow, whether I'm, there's a traffic light system or I'm going to meet a boat coming the other way, I have no idea. So I hadn't planned on experiencing tunnels that soon. So let's get this show on the road. Superb morning, and I believe I can just see part of Husband's Bosworth Tunnel. So, tunnel light on.
didn't enjoy that one bit, but I've done it. What the hell? Did I just run over someone? Yeah, my nerves are all awash today. 15 years ago, I would have breezed that. But good fun though. So I've just been through Husband's Bosworth Tunnel and we've gone around this bend. We're about here now. So it's an absolutely beautiful day for it. So a little bit about how the boat's going. The engine is chugging along fine. So the engine hadn't really done any work for a good two years. The exhaust is clearing up lovely. It takes a while to clear away all the, uh, all the crud and everything needs to warm up and burn off. So moored up at a rather splendid spot, about four or five miles away from Foxton. Just the place for a drop of tea and some cheese and onion sandwiches. I can think of worse places I've had lunch. I just can't get over how quiet these canals are. Very nice lunch. Very enjoyable. now turn round after an emergency 50 point turn in a winding hole. Um, no doubt due to the fact that there's a show on at Foxton this weekend. There were boats moored up in the winding hole. Well it's not lost on me the fact that there's uh, an immense feeling of privilege embarking on a life like this. And I, I don't mean that in any snobby kind of way. It's the way of the, the modern world to a achieve as much as we can, accumulate as much as we can. And I'd be the first to put my hands up. I remember a favorite clip 1960s film The Bargy with Harry H. Corbett and he's having a discussion with the manager of the depot where he's just unloaded a load of goods from his boat and the depot manager is he's aghast trying to convince Harry H. Corbett why he should better himself and get a house like everybody else. Harry H. Corbett mentions that he doesn't want a house like his and the man says, but you haven't seen my house. And Harry H. Corbett says, of course I have. 
10 million times from Birmingham to London. Priceless. Well, I appear to have picked up some kind of detritus on the underside at the front of my boat. Well, it was a branch that actually got stuck into the drain in the gas locker. Husband's Bosworth Tunnel again. Well, I've got to Husband's Bosworth Tunnel, um, but we're waiting for a boat to come through. And so are these people here. This can't be bad, can it? It's a late June evening. It's 25 to 9, and I'm not far from Crick now. Beautiful sunny evening. And good morning. It's the third day of my maiden canal voyage and for now that is it I'm now back at uh, Yelwatoft and I now have to leave the boat for a couple of weeks as I have commitments elsewhere yeah it's been an intense voyage by voyage I don't mean on the canal I mean everything I've had to do to get to this stage 